taboo. After dinner he was bashed by an islander at Circular Quay because I looked fresh and he was antique white, his hair receding. I remember him fumbling for his glasses among heels on the ice cream stained pavement. The policeman at the rocks took affidavits, smudged such small interference in the prescribed light. I counted imperfections in the mock terrazzo. We went back to the hotel, slept like octopedes, till I left unnerved, and he flew out. The smug miss at reception glared at me like I was a huss, so I wiped my blush, the silver hoop earrings. That was my twisted shit. I guess we strayed too close to the jetty, sinking in the lapsed night. The Herring Laughs Not far from the stone harbour, herring kilns, pump wood smoke smudged into an enterprise of masts, and the hemp rigging of a whole fleet outward bound. Her knife flashes in four second strokes, her wet hands never stray from a salted barrel. There are knots in her scarf the size of a child's fist. She counts each silver piece tossed over the shoulder. Eye, hand and index finger outwit the boundless sea. All day men bustle in the courtyard, children stray. A blacksmith smites metal, fishermen wait on a shilling, whittle a stick along the wall, no word exchanged. She tramps from port to port, from crail to pit and wean, the day unfinishing, the children yet to be fed. The sailmaker, cooper, boat builder have all prospered. She stands by a trough in the dark, guttering cold, black hull's heel under press of log sails, four masts low, they drift with shoals of migrant herring. The sea returns. The Edge of Empire All winter they slept at Scara Bray, their rocks empty. They dreamt of ivory and afterlife. They fed their herds grain. When they woke, Romans had marched to the stone forts of the mainland. Gramatishi brought staffs squids and a senator's remittance. But there was no caesura, no straight lines at the edge of empire. The wall was porous, grafted, a milestone coursing between firths. It was like Palestine or Berlin in theory, a decumanus dividing tribes, farmlands, lords, libations for new gods, bright silver coins, the frontier subsidies. Surveyors reckoned the lie of land, in turf, in clay numerics, but nothing could drive out the barbarians. Hepton Stall. Sting of bramble, flags of Himalayan weed have consumed the old pack horse trail as I hike, reason with breath, counting each foot, carriage echoes deep in the valley. The heavens rupture bright above the buttressed woods Stippled leaves initial the sun's secrets in rose gold. Hauled up over time's sediments, ruddy crags, a cast-off mattress copies the leaning quarry, hairline fractured, where the wild grass is stonewalled. To arrive is a peculiar risk, light fearing, wind hissing in the sycamores, collects scraps. Dog walkers shrug, a girl on a scooter, a boy bouncing a ball. Here a housewife airs the bleak expanse of myth and more, aggrieved, not by routine which might be quartz to the mind. Know this world's indifference, charnel house of bones to ration the earth's sacred plot, rivers of peat, horse-drawn, gravestones erased, lifted by storm, as colossal trees wrest one casualty from the next. Paramore, or prey, God's lioness, or legendary swan who by gravity resurrects. The ash tree in the churchyard bleeds red berries, spilled and bruised, badly in need of cautery. It hurts to accost death in her ruins, birthday letters, pebbles from Devon, a shot through asters, words, 
the bark of giant trees, even a crow fears, plough the anatomy of songs into silence.